with all of my heart, all of my heart, with all of my heart. One hand to plant seeds, one to dismantle machines, one hand to plant seeds, one to dismantle pipelines. With all of my heart, 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 with all of our hearts, with all of our hearts. Well, we're trying to get honks to make sure that there is not a uh, methane gas pipeline through Lebanon, 312A. Right where I'm standing will be the construction site to run the pipe up through here, up to Lebanon. It is as if there was a decision made that it's okay to sacrifice this particular part of West Lebanon, Lebanon, and Hanover uh, with the um, fracked pipe that's going in. So that decision to make this a sacrifice zone, I want to be clear, was not a public decision-making process. I just bought a house that's just off the intended pipeline route, and I don't want this in my backyard. I don't want this anywhere near me. I think we should have a renewable, sustainable energy system, and putting pipes in our ground for the next 40, 50 years of fracked gas infrastructure is not acceptable to me. I don't want our community to make a 50-year investment in fossil fuels when the direction we, we would really choose to make is to bring renewables to this area. There is no such thing as a free market for fossil fuels. We all know about OPEC. Fewer of us know that our own liberty utility is a territorially based monopoly. So when they set their prices, the only thing they have to worry about is getting public utility commission approval. Once that price is set, or if they want to come back and increase that price, that's where they have to go. The only thing we can't afford is more fossil fuel infrastructure. Um, I wanted to start out by giving you a little bit of an update of what's been happening uh, in your neighboring state, Vermont, where the Vermont Gas Company has been building the Addison Natural Gas uh, Pipeline for the last several years. And our little town of Hinesburg has been sort of the last holdout for the phase one construction process. Thank you, thank you. It's been a long, long, challenging fight, and it's been a relay race. There's been many other groups that have been fighting this, and along the way over the years, and we're standing on the shoulders of giants, including our friends at the Upper Valley Affinity Group, who are here today. One of the things that um, that is happening right now, so so the gas is currently running through the pipeline because the Supreme Court allowed them to put, uh, to finish construction through a public park. Uh, even though we were challenging that. We challenged that, we intervened in the Public uh, Utilities Commission of Vermont, we carried it up through an appeal at the Supreme Court, and we took it to the court. And that day in court, we were feeling like, you know, these justices are with us. They asked all the right questions. They understood that putting a, a gas pipeline through a public park set a very bad precedent, especially because there was a covenant in the deed when this park was granted to the town of Hinesburg that said, this park shall be used for education and re recreation only. And they, the justices understood this sets a very bad precedent. Unfortunately, what they're doing is sitting on it. They don't want to sort of apparently stop 
the gas from flowing and make them go around this park, I guess. But anyway, they've been sitting on it now since uh, the beginning of April, and we're still awaiting a decision on it. Meanwhile, we've done 20 public records requests and spent hundreds of hours going through the documentation, the engineering, going online, learning all about pipeline construction and engineering, which is a very tedious subject. But in the course of doing that, uh, we've come to find that um, the pipeline has been constructed in great haste, very sloppily, and now leaves our community and our entire state in great danger because this pipeline could easily fail, explode, leak, etc. And this did not start out being our major focus. We were worried about climate, the environment, and, uh, our landowners' rights, and so on. And now our, our main focus is on safety. And this started when my partner, who's down there with the Truth Matters shirt, Cisco, took a photograph of a pipeline buried in a uh, state historically important or um, environmentally important uh, wetland where this excavator had fallen off into the muck and buried up to its gills. He went out there to take some pictures and found the pipeline maybe 18 inches at most, maybe, uh, buried deep in an area where it was supposed to be at least four feet. And we took those and we went to the Federal Pipeline Hazards Materials Safety Administration and we gave them those photos and said, this is wrong. And the federal authorities, along with a whole list of other complaints that we took to the feds, not thinking that the feds were going to step in. We've all seen that the feds are not necessarily terribly stringent about pipelines uh, elsewhere around the country. But it did have the effect that they came to the state and did, as they are basically obligated to do when citizens uh, file complaints like that. They came to the state and they said, what about this photo? And so Vermont Gas could not get off the hook. In June, they filed with the Department of Public Service, or the Public Utilities Commission now, they filed a, a request for non-substantial change to their state permit, saying, oh, there was this place out in um, New Haven where we didn't bury it quite deep enough. It's the only place in the whole pipeline that we didn't bury it. Really, it is just the only, just that one place. Well, we really think that's very unlikely. So we have been challenging them now on the entire depth issue. And what we've been doing is going through their records and finding how, as time went by, they had a permit, a certificate of public good from the state that had very stringent requirements. And as time went by, their documents and their engineering plans and what they told their construction crews, et cetera, migrated away from what they had told the state they were gonna do and it's there in their own documentation. So we now have another docket going and another lawyer fees to pay in fighting this thing. And that's where we're at. We're waiting for the Supreme Court and we're waiting for this, uh, to, to, um, this, this next challenge to come to fruition. Meanwhile, we have a new head of the Public Utilities Commission who is actually a little bit sympathetic to us. And when we suggested that an investigation into the depth issue was required, uh, that they were supposed to bury it four feet in agricultural lands so that farmers don't run into it, they were supposed to bury it deeper in residential areas for public safety, and they were supposed to bury it deeper under streams because that's required for the environmental protections, et cetera. The Public Utilities Commission has now opened an investigation, and what we are demanding is that they do an entire uh, uh, independent survey of the depth for the entire uh, for the entire length of this pipeline. So that's where things are in your in your neighboring state. And of course, we know that the same fathers, grandfathers, um, um, parent companies are um, the ones who are pushing this here in this town. Are pushing it in Vermont. Are pushing it everywhere. Enbridge, for example, and so on. Up the up the shall we call it the. Um, the food web or the money web of the pipeline uh, industry and the pipeline infrastructure. So Vermont Gas, by the way, very similar to what's happening here recently, after saying for years thousands of customers are awaiting our clean, green, cheap gas, they admitted a few days ago, we came to Vermont, we raised our kids here in Vermont, 
We love this place. We love New Hampshire. You're our neighbors, and we love all of you and your environment. And that's what we fight for. That's why we can't stop fighting this thing. People have been telling us when we stepped in in, in Heinsburg, you've got to stop fighting that thing. It's done. There's gas going. The fight's over. No, that pipeline has a 50-year lifespan. If we stop it at year 49, we will have had a victory yes. of preventing gas for one year. If we stop it at 25 years, we'll have killed it for half of its lifespan. If we kill it 10 years from now, we'll have prevented 40 years of gas flow. We have a neighbor down the road from us who has uh, a beautiful, beautiful farm that they bought and they moved into. They put their hearts into it. They love this place. They are the best stewards. They love every piece of soil, every blade of grass, every plant that they put in their property. This pipeline runs 300 feet from their door. A few days ago, she wrote to me saying, I've had a very freaking out day. There was this horrible noise. They have a mainline valve for the pipeline right down the street. There was this horrible rushing noise, and I was certain that the pipeline was going to blow. And I called my neighbors, and I called the fire department, I called my husband, I called 911. I love these people, and I appreciate how they love their land and how they've been good stewards to their land. So I'm fighting for them. I'm fighting for you. I'm not going to stop fighting. This is just wrong, and you guys, um, are going to stop this thing here. I was listening to, sorry, I always get very emotional talking about this. And remember that there is no such thing as a passive anti-racist. You are neutral in the situations of injustice. You have chosen the side of the oppressor. Thank you. Woo! Bernie Sanders was the first person to come out against the Ned Pipeline. No one in New Hampshire, yes, you can apply for that. We are on Abenaki land, and uh, we are all guests of this land. I am a guest of this land, and we are guests of this earth, and we should treat it as such. Love from the earth. I'm a vampire, babe. Something love from the earth. Love